So you're at a networking event and you meet a lot of great people, you potentially find your next job, and you get a lot of business cards. You go home, you look at the business cards, and you ask yourself, who were these people? Whose business card is this? Don't worry, I've been there. For this episode, I'm gonna give you the tips and tricks for the next time somebody hands you their business card. I'm Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. Hey guys, today you are in for a treat. I'm going to interview Ben Woodward, who is the Deputy Director of Career Programs at the Leadership Institute. He's going to give us his best tips and advice for how to design the business card, what to put on it, and everything else we need to know. One of the things that really kind of gets me is uh, if people just come up to me and and hand me their business card without context. Um, So what I would encourage people to remember is that a business card is just that, a card, a piece of paper with your contact details on it. Are you interested in running for office? Want to work on a campaign? At the Leadership Institute, it is our mission to increase the effectiveness of conservative activists and leaders in the public policy process. We offer over 40 different trainings, including campaign management school, on-camera TV trainings, and writing workshops. If you want to make a difference in public policy, visit leadershipinstitute.org. That's leadershipinstitute.org. Early on in my career, I've had the opportunity to attend numerous networking events. This includes conferences, meet and greets, events where there were other donors in the room. I would have amazing conversations and by the end exchange business cards. I would go home, look at the business cards, and I would completely forget who they were. This is one of the worst things that can happen because This person could have been the difference between a new job or a different career path. And that's something I don't want to miss out on. I remember this one time I attended a donor event and I sat next to this older gentleman who I had a great conversation with. He talked about a lot of things that I was interested in and it was somebody who I would love to reconnect with after the event was over. At the end of the event, we exchanged business cards and I did three general things with the business card, yet crucial, that I find is very important when you're trying to network and create lasting connections. So that leads me to my first point. When you get a business card from someone within the first 24 hours, hopefully earlier, what I want you to do is write a few things on the back or anywhere where there's white space. I want you to write a few things on the business card. The first thing you should write is what you want to get out of this new connection. The second thing you should write is something unique about them that will help you remember what they look like. So, for example, the person I met at this event, he had very unique buttons on his coat jacket that were actually gold animal heads because he was a big hunter. So that was something that really helped me remember who he was even after a few days or a few weeks or even months later. So find something unique on the person or something about them that will help you remember what they looked like later on down the road. Three, you should write something interesting or something personal about the conversation you had. So back to my example, When I was talking to this older gentleman, he was talking to me about his grandson who loved to hunt with him. So that's something I wrote down on the back of the business card. That's something that will be very useful and crucial to creating a lasting connection with somebody when you're networking. Now, the next crucial and probably most important thing you should do after receiving a business card is follow up with an email. I can't stress this enough. So many people have handed out business cards, received business cards, and they never follow up with an email. You won't get anything out of that new connection if you don't follow up with them afterwards. They're going to forget you. And that's just something you want to avoid as much as possible. Lastly, the general rule of thumb is to email the person within about 48 hours of meeting them. Now, when you write the email, this is where a lot of those earlier tips I gave you about the business card come in. When you write your email, you should tell them who you are and where you guys met. And something you can put in there is something that you guys talked about. So in my back to my situation, when I emailed the man that I met at the networking event, I followed up by saying, hi, so-and-so, this is Tiffany. I am so happy I got to meet you at this conference. 
Um, it was great getting to talk to you and learn about your grandson who loves hunting with you. I'm really interested in this, this or that, whatever we talked about. And I would love to find a time to talk on the phone or find a time to get coffee um, to, you know, talk further. This is the best way to reply with an email because it shows that not only that you're interested in, you know, their career or what they do, but you also show that you are also a person and that you also care about what they talked about with you, not just on a business level, but also on a personal level. And that will shine through the email and this person will seem more willing to meet with you or talk to you over coffee or over the phone. Okay, now for my next point, make sure you create some sort of business card organizing system. For me, I have a box that's about the same size as a box of business cards. And whenever I receive one, I stick it in there. Sometimes I put a sticky note on there and add a little extra notes about the person and add that to the business card and stash it in there. But that's kind of how I do it. Some other people recommendations I've had was use an Excel sheet. When you receive a business card, obviously have your columns all set and you can just put in the information as you go along. Um, let's say you email them, you can put in the notes that you emailed them on that specific date about whatever topic, or you can also put in the notes something interesting about them or something you wanna learn about them. Anything that you need, any information you need to create a further connection, you can just throw in there in the Excel sheet, which is really, really nice. Another thing you can do is purchase a business card organizing book and it just has clear pages and you can stick the business card in that book and you can organize it alphabetically whatever floats your boat whatever is easier I say just find a system that works and stick with it all right and now for my last point make sure you always have a business card on you the worst thing you can do is go out somebody asks you for your business card and you don't have one I dread that that happens to me all the time and I always forget. So please don't forget to have a business card on you. But also, if you are at an event or meet somebody, anytime you ask or need a business card, make sure you ask them for a business card. I find it always a lot more important to ask somebody else and receive a business card than to give a business card. Because once you have it, then you have the power of reconnecting with this person and creating relationships by emailing them, by calling them, by following up. If you give them your business card and you don't get theirs, then you're at the hopes that they will email you or call you. And you'll just be waiting and waiting and waiting and never receive that email or phone call. Don't do this. Just make sure you ask for the business card and you're set. You don't have to worry about anything else. Well, that's it, guys. That's all I have for you. Those are my tips and tricks on what to do with your business card when you're at networking events, conferences, and all of the above. Now we're just going to have a quick break. And when I return, I'm going to interview Ben Woodward. I'm so excited to have him on our first episode. So stay tuned for Ben Woodward. If you'd like to see our studio where we record this podcast, make sure to sign up for our monthly Wednesday Wake Up Club Breakfast, the first Wednesday of every month at our headquarters in Arlington, Virginia, where we hear from conservative movement leaders like Representative Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, and Tucker Carlson. Register at leadershipinstitute.org. That's leadershipinstitute.org. Welcome back, guys. I'm so happy to introduce to you Ben Woodward. Thank you so much for being with me on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. Uh, excited to be the first guest on your podcast. Of course. Can you kind of give us a little breakdown of what you do here at the Leadership Institute and a little about yourself? Absolutely. So my role is kind of twofold, really. Um, on the one hand, I help uh, manage the career trainings here at the Leadership Institute. We have a, a vast array of fantastic trainings uh, for anyone who's interested in working, whether it's in the, the foreign service, whether it's in the civil service, in think tanks, in journalism, uh, on Capitol Hill, wherever it is, we have a, a fantastic variety of trainings, uh, which I help to, to organize. And then my other hat is to work on conservativejobs.com, which is the Leadership Institute's free 
employment placement service where we work with uh, recruiters from the conservative movement and job seekers uh, to help hopefully connect the two together and help people find fantastic job opportunities. We offer a lot of mentorship to uh, young and some experienced conservatives in the job market. So all that to say, we help conservatives find jobs one way or another. That's awesome. And now, actually, I wanted to have you on the show because I think you're one of the experts here who can talk about business cards, which is our topic for today, and kind of give us an idea of like what your best advice is for networking and everything along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. So one of my first questions are, what are some bad business card practices you've seen before? Gosh, um, a lot. I think one one of the the things that I always really kind of note as being a bad practice. Whenever I go speak at events or if I'm, you know, at happy hours or networking in, in DC, which I, I try to do as often as I can, um, one of the things that really kind of gets me is uh, if people just come up to me and, and hand me their business card without context. Um, so what I would encourage people to remember is that a business card is just that, a card, a piece of paper with your contact details on it. Without context, there is no reason why somebody who receives your business card should want to use it. So the business card is only as powerful as the conversation you have before you exchange that business card. So that is the the number one kind of um, aspect that I would really um, force upon people um, when it comes to business cards. That's definitely one of my biggest pet peeves I've seen at networking events is that one guy just walking around the room handing out his business card. He would leave yep. for my conversation, go to somebody else and hand his business card. He would have a pile in his hand. Like, what are you doing? Yes, you can't help but wonder why they don't just stuff them into an Uno machine and just kind of like <laughs> rapid fire them across the, the room, exactly. you know, for all the good it's doing them, which, which is, is none at all. Exactly. At any networking event, you're going to receive, I mean, three at least, more likely five or six business cards at any networking event you're not going to remember all those people. You're definitely not going to remember the person who just handed their business card over and walked off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, one of my other big pet peeves is when I see a business card and I wonder who designed it. Did they design it or did they find some template online? Because I've seen some bad business cards in my time. Yeah, absolutely. There are some really bad ones. I mean, most of us, especially those of us who are employed, if we're at a of uh, you know working full time at an organization we we have the business card we're given um and so we we have that luxury of 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 that business card right there the li1 is is very simple very easy to read which is exactly what it should be um yeah I, I hate it when you see those business cards and they have these kind of really garish kind of patterns on them or anything that kind of distracts from the the key to the business card so i mean in terms of what should be included on business card um, all I would say is that it should only provide the information that is essential to the receiver, uh, that being your first and last name, uh, your job title, if you have one. If you're an intern, then put intern, but be specific about what type of intern you are. Um, your uh, organization mailing address, if you're not working for an organization, then just your city and zip code is fine. Um, I would suggest a office number i personally don't recommend putting a cell phone number a personal cell phone number on your um your business card i've known several people who've regretted doing that so my advice would be organization number or or no number and of course a reliable email address now what do i mean by that ideally your company email address if you're not employed right now or you know you're an intern or a student and your email address is temporary then just a sensible reliable email address no hot babe 5 or <laughs> italian stallion to <laughs> outlook.com or anything like that yeah so, definitely update that high yeah. school or middle school even email address for sure <laughs> definitely definitely so all you need is those kind of really essential details that gives people the opportunity to to contact you and to reach out to you um you don't need you know excessive amounts of information so much so that you're having to shrink the text of your uh business card so that it's basically unreadable anyway so keep the information just to what the um, receiver needs to know in order to number one know who you are and number two contact you 
Now, what are your thoughts on someone who might have a professional social media or a really nice LinkedIn? Do you advise them to put their social media handle or even like their LinkedIn, shortened LinkedIn address on the business card? That's a really good question. You know, actually, I I guess I should have added to my previous answer, uh, uh, organization website, if you have a bio on your company website, that can be a really good thing too. I think that's fine. If you have that, that should be a priority. Some people have personal websites as well. Um, And so, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having that. I would steer clear of Facebook unless, you know, you're in a a realm where your Facebook, you know, is part of your kind of uh, portfolio maybe, you know, if you're in media or if you're in the arts. But ideally, um, either your personal website or LinkedIn, that's what that's for. Um, whereas to me, Facebook and, and Twitter are a little more personal. Um, so unless those are an essential component of your personal brand, I don't think there's any reason to include those. I think best case scenario, company website linked to your bio. Um, but also worth remembering that most people are not going to sit down and spend a long time typing out the web link to all of your information. And so... Um, if I were you, I wouldn't concern yourself too much about including excessive amounts of your social media or personal websites. Now, what about QR codes? I've seen some business cards where somebody might have a professional website or portfolio, or even they might use it for their LinkedIn, and they'll put a QR code on their business card. Yes, this is this is new to me as well. Um, I, you know, I've never seen this yet. Really? Unbelievably, I've never been handed How? a business okay. card that has a QR code on it. Um, maybe I need to. Maybe I need to hang out with a younger crowd. I don't know, but yeah, I guess we're in the wrong generation. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, go for it. Why not? Um, all I would say is that when it comes to your business card, I think having the QR code on the back might be a good idea. You don't want to be cramming too much onto the front of your business card. It's still got to be. Uh, it's still got to be readable. You still got to be able to, you know, see the information on it. So stick the QR code on the back. Be aware that most people, like 99% of people, aren't there yet. Um, But, you know, if you're in the digital space, then there is absolutely no reason uh, why a QR code shouldn't be on there. It's probably preferable, you know, on reflection than, um, you know, a a long, drawn-out website link address because, you know, people are lazy. They're not going to put their – they're not going to spend a long time typing out your web address, but they might scan your QR code. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that actually brings me to my next point. What about kind of design styles? I You said a lot about like not cramming too much in your business card. So I'm sure leaving white space is a good, it's good advice. Yeah, it is. It is. I would suggest, um, you know, number one, again, remember it's easy to read. Keep the font legible. Keep it to a, a good size, you know, so that you can see it. Just think to yourself, you know, could my grandma read this? <laughs> exactly. You yes. know, uh, so make sure that you're aware of that. Um, good quality business cards, um, really important. You know, it's a bit like your resume. You know, you don't want it on see-through paper that wrinkles easily. Um, you know, so make sure it's it's good quality enough card that the item itself appears some way valuable or special. However, um, I don't think you necessarily need to have, you know, I've seen some business cards that are very thick and very dense business cards, which is kind of cool because they stand out. But number one, they cost a lot of money. Remember, you're probably going to be buying, uh, you know, 250 business cards at any given time. Um, And number two, you need to be able to carry them with you. Um, I absolutely love those uh, fantastic pockets that you can put business cards into your phone now. You know, you never forget them that way if you have these humongous chunky business cards then you're unlikely to be able to carry many with you um and then in terms of kind of how it looks i think white or eggshell um for me there's no exceptions on that with uh black or maybe a navy blue font um but it's got to be readable there's no for me there's no exceptions on that unless your employer forces some other garish design on you in which case you're kind of stuck with it um i think a nice pattern or design is absolutely fine But make sure it doesn't deter from the readability of the business card. You know, I've seen some business card where there's, you know, a bright pink kind of background and it makes it hard to read the text. Um, So keep it to the borders um, of your business card. Nothing too distracting or too garish. Now, do you have any advice on what program you might want to use? Like Canva, Vistaprint, do you have any kind of personal favorites? 
That's a good question. Um, I've I've never used Vistaprint. I've always been I've always been a Canva person. That's nothing not to say that Vistaprint isn't good too. Um, Canva is a really really good design. Uh, we we use it at Li uh, from from time to time. Um, so for me that's been great. Um, I've heard a lot of praise about Vistaprint because it's it's reasonably priced, um, and so. At the end of the day, at the risk of seeming like this is a cop out answer, your your budget controls really <laughs> um, your decision making on this. Pick something that is within reason, especially, you know, and this is really speaking to those who are making their own business card, aka they're either self employed or not employed, maybe um, <clears throat> most likely scenario. So they're paying for their own business card, which means that you know their their budget is going to be important to them. Uh, certainly when I was a student, when I was an intern, I didn't want to be paying, you know, hundreds of dollars for business cards. So go to go to one of these mainstream companies um, and buy them in bulk and let your wallet dictate what you can what you can do. Yeah, it really adds up front back. It costs extra. You can do horizontal, vertical, a lot of extras add ons. Yeah, you can even you can. do raised like print too. It, it, it gets oh, really expensive. Oh, you can expensive. really, really go out, go above and beyond with it. You know, whether it's business cards or, you know, same with resumes. A lot of people give me resumes that, you know, they've spent huge amounts of money having them put together. And they're really no better than what at LI we could have just helped them craft for free. And I would always encourage people to remember that the Leadership Institute is there as a free resource. If people want to come in and talk about business cards with me or email me a template, you know, and we can chat about it, I'm happy to do that. I don't pretend to be particularly artistically gifted, but I can at least, you know, make sure that your your business card or anything else is um, going to impress a recruiter in some way. But what I would encourage people to know is it is it's your your technique upon how you use the business card that matters rather than the piece of card itself that's a that's a wonderful point definitely well thank you ben so much for being on the first episode of lead your future podcast i'm so happy to have you on it's my pleasure thank you so much for having me Thank you so much, guys, for joining me for the first episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe or share or leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. The Lead Your Future podcast is produced by Tiffany Roberts with support from Jared Rennie and Jared Cummings. If you want to learn more about the Leadership Institute and see behind-the-scenes photos, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to Leadership Institute on YouTube. 